Hi again, everybody. Here is my second part of this week's White Dwarf summary, The Knightly Freeblades. Uh, this tells their example of what a free blade is, or in their concept of Games Workshop and White Dwarf. Free blades are basically knights that have left their houses to go off on adventures of their own, and these adventures are supposedly very depressing and tragic in nature. Now, the article that they give in the White Dwarf doesn't really explain free blades as much as it just gives you example of free blades that have been created by the staff at Games Workshop. So that's basically what it's going to be, a whole bunch of little mini descriptions and a, a picture in some case of their of their night. Creating your own free blade. Part of the joy of collecting Warhammer 40,000 is creating stories and narratives for your army. And there are few better opportunities to do this than by creating your own free blade Imperial Knight. Ancient tradition ensures that every noble pilot has the right to leave his knightly house and strike out on his own as a free blade. These free blade knights are tragic heroes driven to leave their houses to pursue a cause of their own. Every free blade knight gives you a chance to tell a story of tragedy and adventure and to forge a narrative of your own miniature. All you need is an idea for a story of your own and a color scheme and heraldry to bring to life. Here we look at some free blade knights from White Dwarf team Jess Brickham's Madrigal, Glenn Moore's Firebrand, Dan Hardin's Kappa Mu, and Imperial Knight from a house of his own design, along with a few other tales too. So we're going to start with Madrigal, the Night's Watchman, Lass Invigilus of the Damned Stygia. Jess, I was directly inspired by the Obsidian Knight in the Codex, Imperial Knights. I wanted a similarly mysterious individual, and so Madrigal was born. He's a tragic figure whose status as a free blade is a result of great loss. The last line of defense against a massive demonic incursion, Madrigal was unable to halt the murderous predations of the servants of chaos, and so his homeworld of Stygia fell. As the lone survivor, Madrigal's guilt at his failure led inexorably to a self-imposed penance that has no end in sight. Rejecting the heraldry of his house, Madrigal relentlessly patrols the benighted remains of Stygia, a dark figure outlined against a pale moon, striding through the blackened forests and the empty shells of dead cities. As a result of demonic invasion, Stygia is a victim of fell sorcery, and the dead rest uneasily beneath its surface. Madrigal haunts the dark places of his world to ensure the victims of his failure stay in their graves, and he watches warily for fresh warp taint, ever vigilant for signs of the demon. Next. Retribution Incarnate The Fellblade, known as Retribution Incarnate, was first sighted during the Macarian Crusade, when an Imperial Guard task force was fighting through the jungles of Sin Secundus against the Chaos armies of the Jade King. The Imperial advance was on the brink of collapse. At the peak of the battle, noble pilot Lothar saw his brother knight's suit pulled down and destroyed. Such was his rage that he single-handedly charged the Chaos forces, buying time for the Imperial troops to regroup. Lothar was never seen again. Instead, Imperial Incarnate limped out of the jungle to join the Imperial forces. 
Mmm. Mysterious. Next. Gerantius. Gerantius is the self-imposed defender of Sacred Mountain on Alaric Prime. If legends are true, this Freeblade Knight is truly ancient. And if they are not, he still far predates any living memory on the world he so righteously protects. Not only is he considered a mighty warrior, Gerantius is also the subject of considerable superstition and myth. Some claim that when he walks to war, the sick are healed, and pure rains fall from the skies, driving drought away. Others claim that he has eldritch power, for he has a for he has cheated death only to return again and again. Nobody knows the truth about this strange guardian, save only that he steadfastly protects the sacred mountain and those around it. Okay. We see where we're going here with these. Auric Arachnius, or Arachnus. Few Imperial Knights, Freeblade or otherwise, can lay claim to such glorious accolades as Auric Arrakis. During his labors in the battle for Macrag, alongside the Ultramarines chapter and their Planetary Defense Force soldiers, Auric valiantly fought at Cold Steel Ridge, killing many Tyranid monstrosities during the fighting. When Lord McCrag sounded the retreat, Auric fell back in good order and was able to rejoin Imperial forces mustering at the Southern Polar Fortress, where he was instrumental in the fighting there. Very few survived the fighting during the final hours of the battle for McCrag. But when the Ultramarines relief force came, they found Oryx standing tall, surrounded by the warriors he had fought and bled beside. Woo! They're instilling these guys retroactively into, into history. The Firebrand! Glynn. The story for my Freeblade Knight came to me when I was painting the model. I had some very specific ideas for modeling and painting techniques I wanted to use on this model. And as I was working, I found myself cooking up, no pun intended, honestly, the story behind the enigmatic warrior known as the Firebrand. The legend surrounding the Firebrand describes him as a foolhardy and impetuous knight who favored direct action over the subtlety and tactics espoused by the baron of his house. His legend purports that long ago the Firebrand led many imperial knights of his house into a foolhardy confrontation they couldn't hope to win. They were outnumbered and decimated. Appalled at his lack of foresight and the loss of so many of their number, the survivors named him Firebrand and banished him for their and banished him from their doomed and now long since forgotten house. Scholars have speculated over the years which noble house the Firebrand brought so low but none dare to ask it aloud. Now, the firebrand can be seen where the fighting is thickest. Some say he is trying to pay penance for the destruction of his house. Others say he still fights with the same wild abandon, regardless of history. Of his name, the firebrand bears no shame in it. Instead, embracing the venom with which he was labeled and unleashing it in the crucible of battle against the enemies of mankind. Boom. Next. Chlorian Saichi, the forgotten warrior of House Traenor. 
Dan, it's no secret that I love anything to do with Adeptus Mechanicus. So when these towering war machines came to the scene, I knew I wanted to base mine on a Mechanicus-aligned house. Reading through Codex Imperial Knights and The Knight Companion, I found the dubious relationship between the knightly houses and the Adeptus Mechanicus highly entertaining. I especially like the idea of Mechanicus Adepts infiltrating a, a fortress to steal the pre-imperial technology owned by the knights. Chlorian Saichi belongs to House Trainor, who long ago threw in their lot with Adeptus Mechanicus, though they remain justifiably suspicious of them. Having fought alongside Titan Legions and the Imperial Guard on Betalus III, Chlorian's phalanx was virtually wiped out in an ambush by Eldar Aspect Warriors. His suit battered and broken, Saichi spent weeks in the icy wilderness making repairs before limping back to the Imperial lines. By the time he returned, the war on Betalus III had ended and many of the troop ships had already left for new war zones leaving Saichi behind. Seeking assistance from the Mechanicus artisans and tech priests that still remained, Saichi was able to repair his knight armor and seek passage to a new war zone, where he would fight alongside them until he could make his way back to his home planet of Mancora. The price was costly, however. Unfettered access to his armor's high technology and that was it, apparently. That was the price. <clears throat> okay. There you go. That was how to make a free blade, and they're examples of the tragic figure you must be if you plan on being a free blade. Or join one of their pre made nightly houses or create one of your own. I hope you enjoy it. Next time, we'll be doing some data slates on tyrannic war veterans. See you then.